Hello, welcome back to Silver Thread Sewing. I'm Diane. This is Friday Sews. So as always, thanks to Jen from Today in Jen's Sewing Room for starting this hashtag and thanks to every one of you for stopping by my little channel. Um, I would say it's been a good week, but my friend Alan always, if you can't ask him, has it been a good day? Have you had a good day? Because he starts, well, all days are good. Circumstances are not always good, but all days are good. It's just today. So I'm not going to say it's been a good week or a bad week. It's been a week and it's okay. Everything has went fine and the circumstances have been not ideal, but been okay. Um, Greg has been a little bit under the weather this week. He uh, got up Monday morning feeling bad and, um, you know, running a fever, a low grade fever. So we did a COVID test and that was negative. And so I don't know what he had, if he had a, maybe a virus or a, a stomach bug or something, I don't know, but he's better. He just still kind of, kind of weak and feels bad, but I never got sick. So, um, yeah, I don't know what the deal with that is, but I'm glad and thankful that I haven't been. Anyway, I have had another week of what not to do when you are sewing. Um, I have worked and worked and worked on the uh, itch to stitch iris top that I uh, lengthened the sleeves on and the, the neck stretched out and it was just a mess. But um, I tried some of the suggestions that you all gave me. Uh, and they were all good suggestions. I tried the shirring elastic, just running a couple lines of that around the neckline to gather it in, and it didn't do anything. I guess it was probably the fabric uh, where it's so stretchy and thin, maybe. Um, I tried lengthening the stitch length, and I tried shortening the stitch length, and nothing helped. So then I took a little piece of elastic and, and made a little hole and kind of went around the neck band to try and draw it in that way, and that looked really bad. <laughs> so then I had one suggestion to maybe take ribbon or some contrasting something and run through, you know, kind of to make it show and look like it was intentional, and that's what I wound up doing. Um, and this is kind of how it turned out. Um, so yeah, it doesn't look it doesn't look terrible, and all I did was I took a um, one of the large eye needles and just started running that from the center front, and I would just take my thumb and put between, so I did it, I don't think I can show you that, I did it about a thumb's width apart, the stitches, and just ran it in and out, and then drawed it up, kind of like a drawstring. Um, I don't love the way it looks. But I'll um, insert a picture or some footage of me with the jumper and the top on. Um, it it's not it's not really great to be honest. It kind of looks bad. <laughs> um, so I'm not sure that it's something I'll be able to wear. But I did want to show it to you and wanted you to see it. And uh, and I did want to thank you for all the suggestions on how to draw that neckline in. And I do like the 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 effect this gave, the, the uh, ribbon through there, I think that the brown ties in with the jumper. Um, <clears throat> but it, it doesn't, it doesn't look, it doesn't look very professional or, you know, it kind of looks homemade in my opinion, the way that I did it. Um, so I'm not sure. I don't ever get rid of things like this. If it's something that I can't salvage, maybe I can Maybe I can take and take it apart and use um, the larger pieces in something else or recut it into something else. And if not, if, if the fabric is such that, you know, that it, I can't do that, I am saving all my pieces like this for a closet core poof, poof, I don't know how you say that. It's like a footstool, but like a little ottoman and make that and then you can use whatever you want to stuff it to make it big enough and firm and this kind of thing if I can't figure out a way to wear it if if I just don't feel comfortable wearing it then I would probably use it in that but um but I think it looks it actually looks fairly well um, on the screen right now better than it did on me let's put it that way <laughs> the jumper um it was McCall's um it's it's so simple, McCall's L9578. 
and the pockets on it are large enough to put a small child in. <laughs> I could about, I could just about carry Salem around in that pocket if she would sit still. But um, like the one comment from the viewer told me, it would probably, this fabric being so heavy, would probably make it hang oddly and maybe stand out away from the body a little too much. And she was right. Um, I like the way it feels though. It feels really good on. And I still love this butterscotch color with it. So that's my main disappointment with this is because I love this color. But, you know, I can always, I had another suggestion to wear it over a button-down shirt, like a white blouse, and that was a very good suggestion, too. So, I will keep you posted um, on how I wind up wearing the, the jumper, but I will insert a little clip or something of me with it on and with the shirt, because I want you to see that and see you know, see what you think. You may have a different opinion than what I do, and that's that's great if you do. Um, I had done a few little things for gifts, nothing major. Um, I was not going to stress about it, so so I've not done a whole lot of sewing as gifts, but I did make several of the little tissue, um, the little tissue holders, and my tissues. I had to order those, and they finally came in, and they have these little clasps. I hope you can see that. And I've made them in all different colors and I had just scraps of fabric and it doesn't take very much at all. And and so I've got a whole bunch of these made up, just kind of little, little gifts like the coasters to give that, maybe the tissue holder and a couple coasters. Um, I made several of both. And I made a few of the um, just little zipper pouches. And I wanted to make a couple more of these, and then that would make a pretty good little gift, the little tissue holder to match the zipper pouch, maybe, and um, a coaster. And then I found at Walmart, I found these little wooden uh, ornaments. It, they were ornaments, really inexpensive. They were six on a little card for like two forty-eight, dollars And um, they had this gold foil-looking like a little string to, to hang them on the tree. But I didn't like that gold stuff. It just looked, well, they were cheap, but they looked really cheap. So I took and cut those gold hanger pieces off and put just a little bit of, of jute. I don't know how well you can see that. Maybe there. And I just thought they made the cutest little gifts and I'm gonna write in, um, a, take a little bit of paint paint pen and write 2023 on them. And so I thought all these little things together, you know, would make a nice little gift for somebody that, you know, somebody you want to give a little something to, but you don't really know what they like or what to buy for them. And the last thing that I have worked on are these little jars. And I put some stick on buttons on them, just a plain little pint mason jar. And what I did, um, I took some scrapbook paper that my daughter had given me. So I have, I think there's like three different prints. So like that, and that, and where's another one? And there's another color. And what I did, um, and you wouldn't have to do this same thing, but I just put uh, Bible verses on them, uh, kind of little encouraging verses. Uh, like Psalm 91, 1, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I thought that was a good one. Um, and I'll read one more. Uh, Romans 8, 18, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will, will be revealed in us. So just some little encouraging little Bible verses. And then I cut them out with my scrapbooking scissors so they would have that cute little curvy edge and fold them in half. You could fold them, make them larger and fold them into thirds or whatever, and then just put them down into the, the, to the jar like so. And I wrote on this little card here, uh, read one daily and meditate on it, repeat every 24 hours. And I just punched a hole in that little piece of cardstock and hand wrote that and put it on with a little piece of jute rope or 
twine or twig or whatever you call that. And then you just put the lid back on it. And I thought that would be cute. But if you didn't want to use Bible verses, you could use uh, jokes. You could put little funny sayings. You could put one word. You could do like a motivational word of encouragement. You know, um, you've got this or uh, you can do it or, you know, just something, whatever, or something funny. Um, but I just thought that would be something that they could use. I think I wound up with 31. So there would be one month at a time in this jar that they can just pull one out per day. So that was going to be one of my little gifts. And then the little ornament and the coasters and the tissue holders and the little zipper pouches. But I'm only making about three of those full sets um, to give just a few people and the rest. I thought I would just hand out the little tissue holders to people. Um, we've got one family gathering and there's several um, nieces and nephews and all that. So I thought I would give maybe one of those to each of the girls and just, you know, nothing specific. And I got, I picked up a pack of these white bags and they're nothing but lunch bags like you would get in the grocery section of, you know, whatever store. And um, you can get them either brown or white. And I just picked up the white ones and was just going to write Merry Christmas and fold them over, punch a hole and tie a red ribbon through it and put the gifts down in it. So that'll be three or four of those. Um, and that's, not, that's, that's all I'm doing. So um, I had hoped maybe to make a couple pillowcases, like kids print pillowcases, but I'm not pushing myself to do that. If I get to it, I will. There's three kids. There's two little boys and one little girl. And um, if I if I manage to have time that I don't have anything else I need to be doing, um, I may make three little magic pillowcases. Um, so the my little bit of a fail and my Christmas stuff. Now the question for today is, um, shout out your favorite YouTuber who makes amazing gift tutorials and suggestions. So I have two that I watch a lot of. Of course, I know all of you probably watch um, Elisa from Thoughtful Creativity. She has such a great channel and she is so talented and just has the most creative, thoughtful things to do and make. And so I watch her a lot. Um, and Nikki from Pen Cut Sew, I found her, I don't know, back a few months ago. And she I've went back and watched a lot of her older videos, but she is so talented. And she's a lot like Elisa. She just, um, she can show you how to do things and make it seem so simple. And she does a lot of quilt stuff and um, just all kinds. So I will link to both of their channels in the description below if you want to check them out. There's a lot of other ones that I love to watch. And most of my other ones are primarily sewing garments. Um, or garment sewers. I don't know. <laughs> but most of the others that I watch are people who sew clothes, not necessarily crafts. Although I'm sure they sew some of that too, but I've not seen some of them do tutorials. But um, that was the question and that's all I have to share. <laughs> so uh, hopefully I've showed you how the jumper and the shirt look together. Um, don't, don't worry about hurting my feelings because I know that it, it's not all that good of a look, but uh, I do like the jumper a lot, and I would like to make it again just probably in a less heavy fabric, just like my friend viewer suggested, so there you go, but I hope you guys are well. I hope that you have a great weekend, and remember, never give up on sewing, even if you have a lot of fails, because you'll never have time or money to get into any kind of trouble as long as you sew. <laughs> See you next time.